Throughout human history, there has been one fundamental question that has literally plagued us and has been asked in the same way by African sand people in the bush of Botswana, Aztec emperors trying to legitimise their power, rioters who overthrew the Qin dynasty in China before they established the Han, Dutch merchants aboard a ship heading for the New World, Irish druid poets trying to remember their way home, Middle Eastern dancers, aboriginals, declared flora and fauna, Eskimos, billionaires, engineers, homeless people in the Levant and the Queens of Siberia have all asked one question. What do we do with all this poo? I'm going to make a shocking claim here. Everybody shits. Doesn't matter if it's a girl you think is the most beautiful thing in the world, or a homeless man trying to get shelter on a rainy London street, or the Queen living two blocks away from him thinking how much she misses Jeffrey Epstein. Doesn't matter. They've all been squatted over a toilet cross-eyed regretting that chicken tikka masala they had last night. So, humans poo a lot. The average person over the course of a year squirts out about £320 or 125kg of rejected rectal residue. That's about the same weight as an adult panda. So basically, you poo out the equivalent of a panda every year, and if you learn nothing else from this video, I want it to be that. A fact that gets even weirder when you find out that a panda will poo the same weight as you, and if you find this panda, you will have a special bond as they will be your sole poo panda. Now, I started this episode uh, wanting to find out who invented the modern toilet. In other words, if you had a time machine and really needed to go to the toilet, how far back could you go and be able to sit down on a toilet in a room by yourself, do your business, press a button or a lever, and it's taken away? And honestly, it's, it's a more difficult question than you think. You may have heard of Thomas Crapper. Many people say he invented the toilet, which is, you know, it's a nice story, but it's uh, not true. He did invent a mechanical ball cock, which I thought was invented by a German porn director. Oh, it's using toilets. Oh, I've been, I've been doing the wrong type of research. He also invented a mechanism for filling the toilets faster, which is used to this day, but not the toilet itself. If you Google it, it gives you four answers, and even that's just scraping the surface. Not literally, don't scrape the surface of your toilet, please. Three of four of the answers they give are English. They are Joseph Braham. Born 1798, Alexander Cumming, born 1731, and John Harrington, born 1561. All of these are considered the inventor of the flush toilet. How? Then there's a fourth answer, which is Ismail al Jazari, a man considered to have invented a toilet linkage for mechanisms, a sand casting, which is where you build a house out of sand, paper models like the things you build uh, model airplanes with, lamination, he invented how to laminate things. And he even invented something called an elephant clock, which is a massive clock that's powered by an elephant. The man was a fucking inventing beast. And he was born in 1136, a whopping 425 years before the oldest English person to have considered to have invented a toilet. Again, how can that be? The answer is easy. Racism. See, in our Euro-American-centric worldview, where history starts at World War One, we tend not to look too far past that because of you know, all the genocide, uh, lots and lots of fucking genocide, attempted genocide and then famines that were invented so you could do genocide without all that pesky murder. God, I love Europe. But because we have this view that things are generally invented in Europe or America, we tend to forget that that really isn't the case. And this is all too noticeable when looking at who invented the toilet. Like imagine knowing that human beings have been around for around 200,000 years. 200,000 years of constant shitting and we only figured out how to use the toilet in the 18th century. I'm sorry but that's just a bit ridiculous and to see why we're going to go to Africa. Now not to take anything away from Ismail al Jazari, but uh, he didn't invent the flush toilet. But we'll go into that in a bit. First we'll discuss if we need the flush toilet at all. See in places all over Africa there is very few flush toilets. And when you look into this, you'll see a lot of articles saying they're too backwards to have modern toilets and the toilets they use are very primitive. But this isn't true. The toilets in Africa aren't primitive at all. In fact, they're so efficient that installing a flush toilet would nearly be laughable. So let's talk about the pit latrine. The pit latrine is an amazingly simple invention that works as well today as it did when it was invented, probably hundreds of thousands of years ago. Uh, it's not known when it was invented due to a lack of historical writing and the fact that throughout history very few people have tended to write about how to defecate. 
But we do know that 1.8 billion people use this method worldwide and the number is only set to increase as India is looking to increase the use of them. And between 2014 to 2018, India had built 85 million of them, even starting a policy in 2018 called No Toilet, No Bride, which tries to convince women not to marry a man who doesn't have a toilet, which I think is a great idea, mainly because I want to see the Bollywood rom-com where that's the story. But uh, this is how pit latrines work. First, you go outside your house, in the opposite direction of where your water comes from. You may think that's quite simple, but it took Europeans a plague, a cholera epidemic, polio pandemics, typhoid outbreaks, and so, so much dysentery to figure that out. Once you're away from the water source, you're going to want to dig a hole. And dig that hole deep so you don't have to dig another hole for a long time. Then you cover that hole with a slab which has a hole in it. But then cover that slab with a movable hut. Then you fill it up and this is where the genius lies. Once the hole is full of your defecate and it's a nice warm day, you remove the hut and the slab. There won't be much of a smell because it would have dried and you dig a bit of that and then plant in something like a banana tree or other fruit trees that require very nutrient rich soil, which this is. So what you used as your toilet now has a tree planted in it and because the soil is basically all fertilizer, the plants grow really well and all you have to do is dig another hole and repeat the process. There's a name for this, it's called permaculture which Google says was invented in the 1970s by an American. And that brings us to the Aztecs. The Aztecs and many other Native American cultures were masters of permaculture and agriculture and for their time in history, just general culture in general. Yeah, they occasionally ate people, but at that time in history, Londoners were drinking water that others had pooed in and blamed witches if they got sick. Hello, I'm just recording something. That's grand. Okay. And there's a little sneak peek into my home life. <clears throat> Meanwhile, in Tenochtitlan, it was the capital of the Aztec Kingdom. I can't really say it. Here it is. It's written on screen there somewhere. Um, everybody, including peasants, would regularly bathe. Over a hundred thousand people were employed to wash, clean, and sweep the streets daily in what would become the world's first use of employed sanitation work like bin men or sewer maintenance all officiated by elites of the society as they were meant to be role models a duty that they took very seriously they took cleanliness and environmentalism to a new level the world had never seen before Moctezuma II, a king of the empire even went as far as to ban littering employed the death penalty for unauthorised cutting of a tree and punishments were even more severe for the elites that's right, more severe than murder. If the child of an elite member of the Aztec society was wasteful of anything, including food or any resources, they were put to death. I say this again, they took the phrase lead by example very seriously. But that's not all, there was a job title known as Pepandoros. Uh, look, I can't really say Aztec words. Uh, pep Pepandadoros. Pepanadors. Pep 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 Pepanardios. It means uh, scavenger. And it's still seen today in modern Mexico, although it's called pepinier, which is at least a bit easier to say, and I still probably said it wrong, which is essentially the same thing the Aztecs used, and is literally someone who would collect and find rubbish and then repurpose it. One of the biggest success stories of this was their ability to collect discarded cloth and burn them in pine torches across the city, which became one of the brightest cities in the world at the time as a result. This also means that the job of recycling started about a thousand years ago by the Aztecs. But now we get to the question of sewage. And to discuss this, we need to talk about the chimpanzas. The chimpa chimpanzas, chimpanzas, why can't I say these words? It means float and garden, but they don't float. They are small rectangular plots of land planted with several crops with trenches in between them, which are flooded. The trenches then water the land, the water removes the waste as the sewer system diverts the waste water into a nearby sea or river away from the city. However, the waste wasn't stuff like poo or pee, which are actually quite valuable in the society. Feces, you see, was mixed with food waste and used as fertilizer on the chimpanzas, while pee was used as dye for cloth, which means that houses would save their pee and poo and sell them in a market which at very least means you'll never go poor. Even if you lose all your limbs, you can just defecate in a bucket and sell it at the market to make sure your kids have clothes and food. You know, which uh, is nice, I suppose. 
What this led to was a zero waste incentive based self sufficiency that was 100% efficient and eco friendly society with no pollution. It was so clean that diseases common in Europe at the time were nowhere in the Aztec Kingdom until Europeans brought them over and the Aztecs couldn't cope with the influx of disease and murder from the Spanish and the society died a horrific death. The Spanish then drained the water of the Champagnes and destroyed them and over the bones of the city of Tenochtitlan, Ten Tenochtitlan, Ten the capital, they built Mexico City, which to this day has many problems in the areas of sanitation, recycling and waste management, which just proves that history doesn't always mean progress. So the Aztecs had one of the first self-sufficient systems of waste management, and the Maya even had plumbing with filtered water into each house and a form of flush toilet. However, they were not the first to have this, and to see who is, we need to go to two places. The first place is Scarborough, Neolithic village in Orkney Island, modern day Scotland, which as far back as 3000 BC had a two way water system to pump clean water in and wastewater out. It was made with stone lined with bark, so essentially you could go 5000 years back in time and sit on something, do a poo, and it'll be taken away and there'll be clean water brought in so you can wash your hands. That's close to what we use today. However, there is one main difference, and it's that when you do your business here, you'll be surrounded by the village also doing theirs, presumably while they look at you in your tracksuit and runners while using an iPhone and, and think, is this uh, food? So it's close, but no cigar. This is why we need to go to the Indus Valley and a few places around there. In particular, the first is, oh uh, God, more hard to pronounce places. R Rakhigari? Rakhigari? That's actually easier. Uh, founded in 6500 BC in modern day India, this is the earliest example of a society using a drainage system, rainwater harvesting, street ducks, step wells, uh, which is great as they have essentially laid the foundations of a modern day bathroom without building one. This is where one of their neighbours in Lothal founded 2350 BC in modern day India, but at the time constituted the same region as the before mentioned Ratagari. So they built on what they did and what they created is not in short of revolutionary. In Lothal there was a sewer network made up of bricks and gypsum emptied into a nearby cesspit that itself was regularly emptied by city dwellers, while non-fecal waste was pushed into the street drains through terracotta pipes. All houses were connected through a pipe network that was covered underground and went into each house that had a specific room for pooping and washing. And when you were done your business, it was taken away into the pipes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a toilet. That's a sewer system. And that is the answer to the question we asked. So if anyone ever comes to you with a time machine and some toilet paper with one thing on their mind, you can take them to Lot Hall in the Indus Valley and you can look at the civilization that created what we know as the toilet, an invention more important than any war machine. This has been the peasants are revolting, and remember if people 5000 years ago can wash their hands, so can you. Thanks for watching and extra points if you watch this on the toilet.